today's safety first, we're going to be talking about landing into the wind. Hey, Brian, how you doing today? Hello, David. I'm doing great. Good yeah, to talk to you. Well. Good to talk Healthy to you. Healthy and happy. Perfect. Yeah. Um, today's topic is landing into the wind. Um, I think a, a lot of people, maybe not so much now as, as it used to be taught, but I remember when I learned to jump, it was kind of beat into my head. We're going to land into the wind. Eat the carrot, right? They yeah, say. and you know, if you're on a Cessna drop zone with three other jumpers in the air, maybe that's not such a horrible policy. But uh, what do we do on a day where the winds are real light? Maybe they're shifting a little bit, and we've got like uh, an otter going with like 20 people. Do we do we want to uh, land into the wind every time when it's changing I direction? I don't think that's such a good idea. Uh, in my experience, uh, at the busier drop zones, you're better off just picking a direction and having everybody agree, don't you think? I mean, if you uh, have everyone chasing the windsock, where uh, on any given load, there could be five, even ten minutes worth of landings if you have uh, some people pulling high. So the, that windsock could might be migrating around. It can be changing headings. So uh, it always seems to work out better if you pick a direction. I think part of the problem is that people are afraid to land crosswind. They were programmed that uh, if you land crosswind, your parachute's not going to be able to stop and you're going to get hurt. And it's not true, is it? I think that main th the main thing is that if, if you recognize that flaring the parachute well, leveling off at a safe altitude, and making sure that you uh, actually, you know, put yourself... Um, in a reasonable heading, you're not going to hit stuff. As long as you're parallel to everybody else, what's the big deal? You look at Eloy, classic example. Two possible landing directions, and they'll let you know as you, as you board the aircraft which one it's going to be. And the odds are that uh, you're not going to be landing into the wind, and you don't hear about massive catastrophes happening in Eloy as a result of crosswind landings. It works out just fine. Um, so bumping into people is more dangerous than a little bit of sl sideways translation. The main thing is that you level off within a safe distance from the ground, which to me is touching distance. If you can't touch the ground, you're too damn high. Uh, so if you have a little bit of lateral movement, you can run that out very nicely. So, so yeah. air airplanes, we don't land into the wind. Uh, very, don't. very rarely do we land into the wind, right? So why, yeah. is it, why should it be any different? Yeah, well, you used to, right? You used to have landing fields to land airplanes, so you could you know, just pick a direction and land it. But now we have runways, and you're kind of uh, there's finite possibilities, so that works out just fine. But uh, I think the main thing is panic. People worry, uh, and they chase the windsock consequently. But I'd, I'd re much rather have somebody slide it in or demonstrate their beautiful PLF technique than cut across my bow and give me turbulence or worse yet hit me. What do you think about the, the the policy some drop zones use where the first jumper down sets the direction? Well, the, it works fine if the person who pulls lowest and has the smallest parachute is smart. Uh, it works fine if they're aware and they consider other people's uh, situations. But you got to remember, some of these people like to downwind it. Some of the people that jump smaller parachutes and get down quickly uh, would rather – swoop in a specific direction because the girls can see them <laughs> as opposed to what direction would be the safest direction. So I think that having a little veto power uh, for the second person down uh, in those situations would be wise because sometimes that first one down is wrong. I almost like it better when you're in the loading area and just the landing direction is decided for the group before you even yep. go, you know, or maybe in yep. the airplane on the way up or whatever, yep. where the whole group, we just decide this is the direction we're landing. Well, I mean, how often does the first person down land without your knowing it? Right? Like maybe so, you didn't see it. Even. You didn't see them. Sure. Exactly. You pulled high. You're dealing with your line twists, and they happen to pull a two grand. You're smart. You pulled up at three five, and they're already on the ground when you're just finishing your housekeeping. Uh, and you may have missed it, in which case, uh, you know, it can get chaotic. So I think that, that establishing that landing direction before getting into the airplane is very, very wise. All right. Anything else on that topic you want to talk about? Uh, well, fly your parachute well, and landing into the wind is uh, not as much of an issue. I say land into the relative wind. Always land <laughs> into the relative wind. That's the secret. <laughs> Brian, 
for those that don't know what I'm talking about, read my book. <laughs> and we're, we're going to find that at transcendingfear.com, right? You can buy it right there. Is that true? Yep. Or you can go through our good friends at Shooting Star. Oh, they've nice. Got, they've, they've got a big pile of my books. You go through Sunshine Factory, lots of other gear, gear dealers as well. But i got to put props. These guys are awesome. I love Shooting Star. Oh, thank you very much. I'll appreciate that. Brian, we'll talk to you on the uh, next episode. Yes, indeed. See you, Dave. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Brian has taken up this new thing of woohooing at the end of every safety first. <laughs> Woohoo! I like it. I like it too. 